So head coach of Desmond Ritter and the Cincinnati Bearcats plus professional television analyst at the national championship, <laughs> Luke Fickle back with us. And, and coach, thanks for making some time for us. I know you're incredibly busy and we'll talk sauce in a minute. But as for Desmond, what kind of player is a team getting who drafts him this week? Uh, first and foremost, a leader. I think a guy that's won in every every different way that you can win in the game uh, in college football in particular. Uh, but ultimately, we're we're gonna what we're gonna miss most is his leadership, his humility, his uh, his ability to win everybody over with such a giant heart and a great smile, and uh, always putting other people in front of himself. So uh, more than anything, not just a quarterback, you're getting an incredible leader who is as good a winner. Uh, and as a competitive as a guy as I've ever been around. Yeah, you talk about that leadership, that stuff that translates on and off the field. And when, and when you guys were in meeting rooms, I know you're defensive side of the ball, but when you're in a meeting room during the season and you know that Desmond's on, to you, what is the best part of his game? His ability to improvise and adapt. I think that, uh, you know, in year one, he had to do certain things to to win football games for us. In year two, he did some different things to win football games. And three and four are different as well. So his ability to adapt to what is ever is needed to be done, whether it's from him or from the whole team. So that's a unique thing. He gained so much respect. At least here he did, and I think he will in the NFL, to be able to do everything uh, and anything uh, based on whatever the team needs and whatever uh, he has to do. He's going to be one of those fun names to watch. Is someone going to come up in the first round and grab him? Is he going to be around two guys? Certainly, we'll keep an eye on Desmond, but I had mentioned Sauce Gardner. He is, in all likelihood, going to be the first Bearcat off the board, maybe even in the top five. You're a defensive coach. Break down Sauce. <laughs> Ahmad, to me, still, I, uh, I've got a couple <laughs> more days before I actually refer to him as his uh, nickname. Um, but I, there's just nothing that he doesn't do really well. Um, as a young kid, as 158, 160 pounds, he went in there. And more than anything, he showed me he's got the confidence. He's got the savvy. He's got the, uh, the, 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 the natural instincts to play the game, um, which I wasn't sure about. Obviously, you don't know that when you, when you first got a guy, especially at 158 pounds. Uh, but there's something really unique. Uh, and I say that, and I say confidence. Everybody thinks that great players have confidence, but I think there's a really internal drive and a confidence um, that that kid's got that I've never seen before. And uh, with, combined with the length and everything else. Forgive me for not knowing the story. So you, is the head coach of Cincinnati, he's a mod <laughs> gardener. He's not sauce to you. <laughs> to me, he's a mod. And I've always kind of harassed him from the get go. I said, Hey, I'm not ever going to call you uh, your nickname until, until you're drafted one day. Well, <laughs> that one day is coming really, really quick here. And you're going to need to call him Sauce because once he has that NFL money, you'll want him to be a pretty good donor to the program. Uh, but, but look, when you when you watch tape, I, I always find this interesting. When you watch an offense game plan away from a certain player on defense, when you watch the tape and you were scouting your offense going into the next week, how would they game plan for Ahmad? Well, we, we, we actually got through the season. We got a lot of single width formations and just try to stick either a tight end on the backside or somebody they weren't going to – kind of focus in on even trying to leave those guys in in protection so that he really was covering nobody. Um, but, you know, as, as we went through the season, I thought there was going to be some of those teams that were going to take real shots at him. Uh, I thought in week two against Indiana, they would take some shots at him. They, they did early, but then didn't again. And then really the Alabama game was the one I said, hey, you're really going to have an opportunity to show what you what you can do because they're going to take shots at you. Uh, they're not going to go away from you. And not that they did, but I mean, I think early on they saw that, you know, the guy is for real and uh, there was no space and there was no not a whole lot of opportunities for them to take shots at uh, at his side of the ball. You know, and, and I'm thinking about it. Just there's just two names coming off the board and you're coming off a playoff berth. Speak to what you've built at Cincinnati and what it means to your program to hear those two guys names get called this week at the NFL draft. What's every bit as much as what they've built. And uh, we might have tried to orchestrate it and tried to guide them along the path, but they've set the example, those two guys in particular, with, you know, obviously Ahmad and, and, uh, and Desmond Ritter. Uh, and a lot of other guys are going to go off the board here this weekend as well that uh, are going to be household names. Um, but what they've done is they've shown that, uh, you know, whether you doubt them or not, through incredible hard work and, and ability to do things together, that uh, not only can they do anything as an individual like these guys, that hopefully are both first round draft picks, but obviously you can do whatever you'd like as a team as well. And that's the uniqueness I always believe of, of this game in particular football. It's the greatest team sport known to man. Uh, and it's amazing what you can do when you do them all together. And 
you know, I think those guys have set the example and, and are going to show not just us. I learned a lot from these guys, but uh, also our, our our university, our community, and a lot of these guys coming into our program, what can be done. As for the state of college football, Coach, it's changed so much in the last year with NIL and the transfer portal. Your story last year, getting into the playoff, doing it for schools who don't always necessarily get that national attention. In your mind, what needs to happen in our sport to make sure future Cincinnati's still get an opportunity to play for a national championship? I don't know if we've got enough time to go through all of that, but I think the idea that they've got to have an open mind, they've got to they've got to look at the play on the field, and uh, you know everybody's got an opportunity, and if they continue to evaluate whether they move from four teams to eight teams or twelve teams, whatever it is, I think we've got to do a great job at evaluating what it is that we see on the field. Try to take the, you know, the 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 stereotypes away and and all the, you know, so to speak, well, what these guys have done in history and, you know, where is their, how many people are they going to bring to the game and just really look at the play on the field and give everybody that opportunity um, if they deserve it. And I think for us, no matter what, whether it's NIL, Transfer Portal, there's a lot of really good football teams out there. There's not as many great football teams, um, but if you really can break down and, and, and hone into who the teams are that you think are the great teams and play well together, uh, you're going to give everybody an opportunity. That's it. Give me more. Give me more teams in the playoff. It'll be fun <laughs> for everyone. Coach, would you please go take a vacation? Give yourself like two weeks. Go take a vacation. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but at some point in time, hopefully we will. I will. You're going to have to because you open up with a big one <laughs> at Arkansas September 3rd. Coach Luke Fickle, always appreciate your time and your candor. Thanks for having me, guys.